This video is a lesson over electrical generators and motors. So let's go ahead and start off with this problem. We have a generator has a coil with 1,000 circular loops of wire that each have a radius of 30 centimeters. They have uh, a frequency of 60 hertz as well. And we know the generator will create an RMS voltage of 100 volts. And an RMS voltage is its really just like the average is a way to think of it. Um, with a maximum electromotive force, we call those an EMF, of 150 volts. And we want to find out the magnitude of the magnetic field. So I've already written out some the given information and also written out what we need to find. Um, and also, if you notice with uh, the radius... I changed that to meters, so we were in our base SI units. And I also changed the hertz. Uh, the hertz, um, well, let me go ahead and write this out. One hertz is the same thing as one, uh, really like one over a second. Um, an inverse second, if you want to think of it that way. Um, so let's go ahead and start off with uh, an equation that we'll need. So we have our uh, we have our electromotive force is equal to the number of loops multiplied by the magnetic field multiplied by the cross sectional area of the coil multiplied by omega and omega is just our angular frequency which we'll uh, we'll figure what that out uh, we'll figure what that out uh, what that is later. And we have to multiply by the sine of omega multiplied by time. Now, to maximize this equation, and that's what uh, we're going to want to do because we have a value for the maximum electromotive force, uh, we must look at the sine omega t. Um, part. And the way you can figure out how to get the maximum from this, sine of just like any function x, let's say, right, uh, can be at most equal to 1. So the point of this is that when we have uh, a maximum electromotive force, that means this equation has to be at its maximum, meaning our sine of omega t has to be at a maximum. So, if we want to write it at a maximum, then we can say the number of loops multiplied by the magnetic field, multiplied by the cross-sectional area, multiplied by angular frequency, and then the sine of omega t just really becomes 1. Now we can actually do some substituting, and so our angular frequency, which is omega, is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the frequency. And then we also know our cross-sectional area is equal to pi r squared. And that's because we know that each coil has circular loops. So the cross-sectional area should be circular so there is our equation for a circle, area of a circle. So now let's go ahead and substitute these in. And so you still have your number of loops in your magnetic field. Now our cross-sectional area will become pi r squared. Our angular frequency will be 2 pi times the frequency. Now at this point it's just a matter of solving for the magnetic field. So really what we're going to do here is divide each side by what I'm writing down here. So really, we should get an equation that looks like the magnetic field is equal to the maximum electromotive force divided by the number of uh, circular loops multiplied by, um, let's see, 
we can try to simplify some of this together by saying pi squared times r squared times f and I'll go ahead and throw the 2 out front that should be right so now it's just a matter of plugging in some numbers so our magnetic field is equal to 150 volts is the maximum electromotive force and then I'll bring the 2 pi squared and just kind of leave that at the front because you can go ahead and use those numbers when you're calculating it then we have our number of circular loops we have our radius squared and then our frequency which is 60 uh, inverse seconds now you'll get an answer of about 1.41 times 10 to the negative third and that's in units of volts seconds per meter squared so when you look at this it doesn't really give us a good unit for um, for our magnetic field but the way units for magnetic field is uh, they actually have it is a Tesla and a Tesla is defined using all the other base units so as you might think one Tesla is the same as one volt second per meter squared and so really all those units will reduce to one so we know our magnetic field should be 1.41 times 10 to the negative third Teslas This lesson has been over electrical generators and motors.